Hello, welcome to everyone. In this video, this is part 3 for the solution of electromagnetic theory CC 11 paper for semester 5 of University of Calcutta BSc Physics Honors. Already two parts are completed for question number 1, 2, 3, 4. Today, I want to discuss question number 5 to 7. If you want to watch previous lectures of different previous year solution of Calcutta University Physics Honors, you can go through the description box. Link are given there. So, let's start to that question. 5 to 7. You can see this is the total question paper 1, 2, 3, uh, 4. This already cover up in part 1 and part 2. In this section, we want to question was the question number 5, 6, and 7. So let's start. Question number 5 says to infinitely extended homogeneous isotopic dielectric medium 1 and 2 dielectric constant this to 5. Meet at t j equals to 0. Plane. A uniform electric field exists where, if, uh, where there, are, there is a, a, a electric field or exists everywhere. For z greater than 0, the electric field given uh, expressed like that. The interface separating by two medium uh, is free charge. There is no free charge. Uh, sorry, the, there is no charge that is charge free. Determine the displacement vector at medium to you need to find out the uh, displacement vector at this medium. So, uh, you know the boundary condition relating to the electric vector that is their tangential component is continuous and the normal component is discontinued by this charge. Because there is no free charge and there is no charge, this is charge free, so this is equal to zero, so you will be obtained this two are equal. The tangential component here, uh, actually this is the perpendicular z cap and the tangential component is ij, which is continuous. So, this in case of this one, this is also the same part. But the normal component is, uh, is the displacement current are the equal. So, the displacement current, displacement vector of medium 2 equal to displacement vector of medium 1, that is epsilon 1 e1 equal to 2 epsilon naught. Uh, e2 which is 5k cap 5k cap part ok this is 2 so d2 is nothing but epsilon 2 tau uh, 1 so epsilon 2 this tau 1 and d2n already obtained so you will be obtained this ok next thing says uh, the an electromagnetic wave is incident uh, at the surface of to uh, find out the ratio of the electric field intensity for the normal incident, find out the condition under which this phase reversal of the reflected wave. So, this is actually Ferenc equation. The incident wave, this one, electric and the magnetic, reflected wave, reflected and refracted wave. Okay. So, boundary condition that is tangential component of electric field is continuous. So, taking this tangential component here for this incident wave, this is the tangential component. Reflected wave, this is a tangential and refracted wave, this is a tangential component. This is the continuous, okay. And the uh, magnetic field at this point also continuous, so this is the magnetic field point. And just use this relation the magnetic field with electric field will be this relation. And just calculating, you know, I think you the, in the in theoretical part, this is you already know. I just mention you the process. So you will be obtained this reflection coefficient like that. And this is the transmission coefficient. What will the phase reversal of the reflected ray? So this reflection uh, coefficient like here, and this will be negative reflection coefficient. Uh, we, uh, if this will be the negative, uh, when this n1 is less than n2, this will be the negative, and this negative says that the, there is a phase reversal. This will be the, in the opposite direction, this will be the phase reversal. Next thing says, a plane electromagnetic wave fall overly on a air glass, find out the angle of incident for this reflector and reflector. Uh, actually, I tried this question to solve. But finally, we got this type of relation cos theta equal to 1.61, one, and you know the value of cos theta is minus 1 to plus 1. So, this is not possible. But I don't know why this actually arises. 
uh, actually you can see this reflected coefficient and transmission coefficient and put this value you will be did not get any value of theta but if you use this one that is reflection coefficient and the strange law will be get this type of but okay so i think there is some methodological problem here something not fair actually so if anyone can do this you must comment in the comment box next question next question says explain the phenomena of double refraction in a uniaxial crystal by applying heisen theory double refraction double refraction means when the light enter any crystal then is emitted uh, in two parts that is uh, one is ordinary ray which follow up the strange law and another one is the extraordinary ray which does not follow the strange law this is actually double refraction this actually can be explained by the Huygens principle because you know in the Huygens principle any point source can be treated as the secondary wavelet source of the secondary source point of the secondary source so you can uh, see here if you take this uh, uh, that is spherical uh, so this will be the ordinary day which obey this lens law and another one is the uh ellipti ellipsoid ellipsoid which is extraordinary ray which does not obey the strange law okay so there are two is e ray o ray and e ray is equal velocity in all direction that is spherical and e ray does not obey the refraction law so optical property uniaxial are the perfectly symmetrical about the optic axis along the optic axis this is the optic axis where these two are equal okay so if the velocity of uh, extraordinary is greater than here you can see the velocity of extraordinary greater than the ordinary so they are uh, referred to index is inverse so this is negative crystal and reverse one is the positive crystal okay next question a um, left circularly light of wavelength this is the wavelength converted into light circularly polarized by this you know this left circularly polarized light can be uh, converted into right circularly polarized by, by, by the half wave plate that is the uh, wavelength change will be like that so from where you can get the value of this thickness like here so this is the minimum thickness you need to use here next question says a thin polaroid placed between two cross polaroids uh, alloy rotated at a rate omega about their common central axis determine the intensity of the transmitted light in terms of intensity of unpolarized light so this is the polaroid this is the polar and this is another polaroid so these two are perpendicular to each other and this is uh, some angle theta suppose some take the angle theta so uh, you know that is the minus law say if this is i0 this becomes i0 by 2 and due to this uh, angle theta this becomes after that i1 and after that this becomes i2 so i 1 equals to i0 by 2 cos square theta and i2 equals to i1 cos square 90 minus theta because this angle is uh, because their angle is theta so this is 90 minus theta okay so finally you obtain this one sine square theta uh, so if you take 1 by 4 here it will be sine square 2 theta and theta is nothing but omega t okay next question calculate the booster angle of a glass where refraction refractive index is 1.5 you know booster angle theta p equal to 10 inverse mu put this value will be obtained this booster angle next question a ray of yellow lights incident uh, on a doubly refracting plate at angle this so this is the incident angle on double and these are reflected by that so from strange law you can easily find out this uh, refracted angle for ordinary and extraordinary you can say that is extraordinary does not obey the strange law but they obey the strange law at the optical axis and you know here they are optical axis uh, placed at the, along the optical axis so uh, you can use strange law uh, extraordinary also because they passes along the uh, optic axis so use this strange law you will obtain this uh, reflect refracted angle for ordinary and extraordinary just difference these things you will be get the option answer next question says uh, state the biot's law 
rotary polarization actually bayer's law of rotary polarization says uh, that is the optic material opti optically active material that's mean when a polarized light passes through this material the angle of polarization actually changed okay so first uh, law says that is the uh, change angle change of a polaroid polaroid material that is optically active substance the angle change is proportional to the length of this tube okay so this is the proportional to the length of the tube the optical rotation theta produced by the different optically active substance if uh, you, you just think about uh, because uh, this is actually the length of the optically active material so this angle of rotation this polarization angle this angle of rotation depend along this length and here says if there is a series of different material uh, different substance like that for that this portion there is an angle theta 1 change for this portion this is theta 2 change and theta 3 like that and they can be uh, clockwise anti clockwise so this will become positive negative as well right and third says optically rotate theta produce a, uh, is de depend on this concentration which the liquid or the solution used here the concentration dependency also here the angle of rotation and fourth says the optically rotation uh, this rotation actually depends on the wavelength of the incident light the wavelength of the incident light so this like that theta proportional to what my lambda square i think clear so this is that one theta is also into l into c so theta equal to s into l into c s is the specific rotation Next question says that is the the solution or uh, concentration like that and uh, length is 33 cause this amount of rotation at this angle this is the specific rotation that is need to find out this s value after that uh, estimate the rotation it will cause the oil length for 50 so this is the formula we just uh, see here uh, you can see s yes, uh, alpha write down here alpha okay so i'll be going to theta by cl so put this value of theta c l you will be obtained this angle and you know this is for 550 nanometer you need to find out the rotation at 450 nano millimeter so you just write down this relationship just we write down here theta is 1 by lambda square proportional to so theta is proportional because so alpha also proportional so alpha is also proportional 1 by lambda square so alpha 2 by alpha 1 equal to lambda square so alpha 2 can be obtained from this value of alpha 1 this is the actually value of alpha 1 so i think clear if there is any doubt you must comment in the comment box this is all about me this is my contact detail you can connect me with this telegram channel and this is my youtube channel details go to this channel we get different phase related videos on mathematics like this session if you learn something for this session share this video to your friends other he or she also get benefit from this video subscribe this channel if you need this channel those already subscribe have to subscribe with the bell icon to get notification of upcoming video so take care we'll meet on the next video as soon as possible thank you